Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Dog Walk, the almost daily, one-take, uncut, unedited show, where I take usually my dogs out. Today, it's only Mistra uh, for their daily walk, and discuss whatever's been on my mind for that day. Uh, It's only Mistra today, not because it's cold, actually quite the opposite, it's really warm outside as i'm sure you can notice just looking around if you've seen any of my other videos everything's melting which is weird because it's the middle of february and hi neighbor oh i thought that was a neighbor is it it might be no it's not yes it is anyway uh where i sorry i lost my train of thought there yeah uh, it's uh funny yesterday i was talking about global warming and again it's february in canada and it was plus seven degrees out today i was out with just a sweater uh but that's not the topic for today uh that is the reason though why daisy isn't here Uh, it's super wet out and disgusting and she didn't seem like she wanted to come so i didn't really want to force her and it's just mistra um what i actually want to talk about today is related to the reason why i'm or one of the reasons why i'm feeling sort of a brain fog again today uh the main reason is actually that felix had a rough night well he didn't have a rough night it's more that he woke up about an hour and a half earlier than usual today uh, which really screwed up my my very little sleep that i normally get and i was completely unable to put him back to sleep Uh, but also uh, today felix had his first ever covid vaccine and I had my first booster shot since since I taken my two since I took my first two original shots back in 2020 2021 something like that when they were mandated by the government because I work for the government I'm in the military so I, I had to take them uh, so that made the rest of the day a little bit more difficult for Felix especially uh, and basically I had a grand total of about five minutes where I wasn't either taking care of him or cooking throughout the entire day until uh, almost uh, well until his bedtime basically so yeah I'm feeling very tired uh, but I guess I will discuss a little bit about my views on health and more specifically on the immune system because uh, my spouse and I have very very different contrasting view on this and I would say I'm very much old school she's a little bit more new school maybe isn't the right term it was the new school up until a little while ago where the doctors realized that they were giving the wrong advice but basically um, i i kind of subscribe to the old adage when it comes to the immune system especially of whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger i always throughout my entire life i've tended to stay away from vaccines uh, for things like the seasonal flu obviously for big things like meningitis and all of that i was fully vaccinated when i was young and i fully believe in in vaccinations and what they do because i have a science background and although i have dabbled in conspiracy theories i i do understand why we don't have polio anymore although it's coming back but all those things i understand how vaccines work and i trust it i trust the science behind them that's also why felix was on a very very advanced schedule of vaccines he actually got four vaccines including a few 
that had uh, that were treating more than one thing uh, last week or the week before just after he turned six months in preparation for our trip to China because the last thing that I want is for him to fall sick while we're literally on the other side of the planet so sorry anti-vaxxers you will not find any support from me also I don't really believe that the conspiracy theories that there's microchips and things like that implanted in the vaccines which is why I took the COVID vaccine also because I don't want just like Felix I don't want to have my trip to China ruined because I'm sick the entire time I'm over there I realize that maybe the vaccine that I got may not grant me the protection that I'm hoping for because they may have different strains over there but hey it's better than nothing and so speaking of better than nothing as I said I am very very old school when it comes to health and the immune system because I listened in biology class I understand that the only way for your body to learn to defend itself against pathogens is to train your immune system it's to be exposed to things learn how to fight them and gain that quote unquote memory in your white blood cells i also believe that because of that so which might seem contradictory to my first point which was that i typically have never gotten the flu shot or anything like that that's weird there's a random cucumber <laughs> okay that was very unexpected uh, sorry about that uh, yeah uh, so the reason why I didn't get the flu shot is because maybe naive a little bit but I always thought that just like you know when you train your body how 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 do you get stronger by by train is it by training and putting strain on your muscles and the more you train the harder you train the stronger you get whether you're talking about just sports activities or you know an exercise regimen in the gym or whatever uh, or does your body get stronger by laying on the couch eating potato chips yeah okay rhetorical question right so <laughs> I've always believed that my immune system works the exact same way and since I also believe that whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger I've stayed away from vaccines because I've always thought for trivial things like the flu because I've always thought that the best way to train my body is to sort of expose it to the full strength onslaught of the virus as opposed to the more muted or handicapped onslaught or attack that would come from a vaccine right that's how many or most vaccines work right they either inactivate the uh, the, the cells of the virus or they provide a, a much reduced potency version of that disease so that your your body can learn to train to fight it with sort of like with training wheels on so that eventually it uh, when the real thing comes it already has built some immunity well <laughs> I've always been the kind of person to go straight away without training wheels you know my when I started snowboarding back in 1995 I did two runs on the you know the training hill you know that would be kind of like this slope this slope here right about this length and without taking a lesson my uh, buddy Guillaume had taken a lesson just before he taught me what he had just learned I practiced it twice and straight away up on the chairlift right so that's how I've always seen uh, sorry I'm just seeing something that might have been useful 
Hmm. As you may have known from other videos, I like to reuse. I'm just looking at that glass case there, trying to think if there's a potential use I could make of it. Probably not, but I'll keep it in mind. Hmm. I might want to pick that up to make a little greenhouse or something like that in my backyard. Hmm. Anyway, enough uh, meanderings beside the point. Uh, yeah, so that, that's why I never took the, the flu shots. Because I've always thought that it's better, whether that's actually a true opinion or not, I've always thought it's better to let my body fight the real thing, fight the real fight. And because of that, I feel like I've probably been able to rebound from most infections, diseases, viruses, etc. much quicker than my peers and the people around me. Now, and, and I say I think, no, I have observed that that is the case. And like my sister is always sick and even times where it would be you know, colleagues getting sick around the same time as me clearly with the exact same thing that i got i'm almost always the first to bounce back and i don't know if it's because i'm just lucky it's because of my overall eating and health habits right i, I eat well and i'm relatively in shape for a guy my age who tore his acl two years ago uh or maybe it's due to the fact that i've always always trained my immune system like that I don't know, but I choose to believe that since none of it has killed me so far, it's made me stronger. And that's a good, one of the main reasons why I rebound so quickly. So that's sort of my attitude on diseases. Is that, what's, there is, that's a, Oh, my eyes. I thought there was a cat sitting there. No, it's a fake horse head. And because of the, the little hair there and the wind, I thought it was something actually alive just perched there. I was, woo, really brain fog today. And I'm probably talking in circles again. So I'll try to move on. Uh, my spouse is the exact complete opposite way. And the reason why I say that is... Our attitude towards Felix, our son. She, I, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to think how I want to approach this. Uh, basically, she is the type of person who, his entire life, she, so far, I mean, six months, right? But his entire life, so far, she's tried to shelter him from anything that could possibly make him sick she's vacuuming the floor so often she's anytime he comes close to to touching one of the dogs it's instant hand wipes and sanitization and all of that stuff um she up until very recent like she still won't let the dogs sleep in the same room as, as us or Felix ever since he was born well now the dogs are sleeping with me because I'm sleeping in a separate room recently so that I can be the one to get up and put him back to sleep when he wakes up without her having to wake up because she's working it's just fair she'll return the favor when I'm the one back to work and she starts her maternity leave when we get back from China but I guess you, you see where I'm going, right? She's almost a, uh, you could almost say a neat freak, although don't get me wrong, she definitely isn't. I've seen so, so, so much worse. It, it's, it's not bad. It's just when it comes to Felix, I think she's being overprotective. And I'm struggling with that because in my mind, as I said, like he's, he's starting to crawl around pretty soon. He's going to be putting every single thing that he finds in his mouth. This summer, I'm going to be taking him, out, taking him outside with me. And he's going to be 
going in the garden and I'm not going to be able to monitor him all the time. So yeah, I do expect some bugs to crawl on him. I expect some dirt to get under his fingernails. I expect, I don't know, him to put some leaves or some grass into his hands. I expect him to accidentally at some point crawl or walk over a piece of, of dog poop that I may have missed uh, cleaning up the yard, you know, things like that. Uh, obviously, if he steps in poop, I'm going to clean him up. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to rub poop in his face just because I think it'll make him stronger. I'm not that extreme. But I truly believe that just like for anything, just like for allergens, with to... to to uh, to uh, I'll get on that point in a second and why that relates to the one of the first things I said today. Uh, like I think exposure is good. I think it just makes you stronger. Am I crazy in thinking that? What's what's your experience? What do, what do you think? Have you seen like real life examples comparisons? I know you probably don't know twins. <laughs> Who one is a neat freak and the other one isn't and you can compare those but like just colloquial evidence I'd be curious to hear what you guys think about that um, speaking of allergens as I just mentioned uh, the reason why I was talking about you know new school then not quite new school and this and that earlier is darn I said this and that again I'm really trying to get away from that verbal tick but clearly I'm not being successful um, the reason why I was saying that is that for since the advent of Lysol and wipes, probably for the last 20 ish years, uh, there's been, well, everyone has been trying to sanitize everything that they come into contact with, which in itself is another problem because when it kills 99.9% .9 of, of bacteria, as it says on the label, or viruses, well, guess what survives? It's the 0.1% that's the strongest. And then you just killed everything else. So that 0.1% that's the strongest is what's going to multiply and take over again the, this new virgin tabletop or, or whatever with no competition. And over time, as you keep doing this and doing more and more, that, that's how you create the superbugs. That's how you create the antibiotic resistant strains uh that are the bane of hospitals right now the the name escapes me there's an acronym for them uh, maybe i'll put them down in the in the comment or in the subtitles because i do put additional notes in the subtitles if you're watching my videos without subtitles you're probably missing out uh, but yeah that's how we create the super bugs and over the last several while at least in canada the advice of doctors was to delay the introduction of allergen foods to the children to much later well guess what happened because of that now everyone's allergic to peanuts everyone's allergic to so many things we are raising a generation that of bubble boys and, and bubble girls who can't go outside because of it and now doctors are realizing it and when I talked to our doctor at his six, Felix's six month appointment he said exactly what I'm saying no expose him the sooner the better because we're finding out that that's how you get that immunity so anyway that's how I see it I know that's not how Faye sees it but uh, let me know what you guys think on that note have a good evening